speaking to you? Have you been afraid to take a close look at what that dream might mean? There might be some sacrifices in there. Maybe we've put some stumbling blocks in the way of your dream. Sometimes, sometimes dreams cost some money. If we aren't in a good position financially, it can hinder us from being able to step into those dreams. And then we need to make a plan. And a commitment to ourselves to begin to change that. Because God does not want us to be held back from living in the calling that he's called us to. From walking into the things that he's called us to do. He wants us to be able to experience the joy that comes from living with him day by day, walking as his child. Oh, I think there's still a little bit. So just as I put a little more right in there. Let's recap. God's power at work in our life can produce miraculous results. If we don't let fear get in the way of stepping out into that. So what has God called you to do? What promises really stand out for you that you have not claimed? What verse jumps out at you when you think of something that God has promised in the Bible? 
Are you claiming that promise? Because I would challenge you to claim that promise today. To spend some time talking to Him and getting to know what God has planned for you and shift some things so that you can step into your destiny. You can begin to walk down a whole new road. And you know, as I've been doing this show, it's, I'm finding it to be challenging, certainly, but exciting at the same time because I'm doing something that I feel God has asked me to do, but it's something that I love. And I get to talk about things that I love talking about, dreams and visions and business and scripture, all the things that I love to focus on all the time. So as we spend time together, it's just fun. For me, it's just fun. And that's a sweet spot to be in. And I think God has a sweet spot for you. Maybe he wants to heal something in your heart, something that needs his supernatural power and light to shine in there and just illuminate whatever it is that's broken or dark and that he can just take a hold and begin to heal you and help you to move forward in a whole new exciting way. Has our time come to the end? I might have been a little shorter today. I'm not sure. But this has been another episode of Paint the Scriptures with True Word Tele. Until we meet again. Good afternoon and welcome back to another episode of Paint the Scriptures. And we're here at True Word Television today instead of in my studio. And so we've got a little bit of a different background, but I still brought a couple of paintings. And as you note, I brought the painting that is going to be uh, put up for auction at the Lighthouse Mission to raise funds for their organization. So I certainly encourage you to go onto their website and support their efforts to look after the the people in this city that are, I consider the most vulnerable people, the people that are on the streets and, you know, dealing with things like homelessness and a lack of food and, and just good supports around them are so important. So everything that can be done to help support them, I believe is a really great blessing to many people. And I'm gonna actually talk about that in my talk today. The other thing I'm going to just remind you about, if you're going to paint along with me, there's lots of great products, like my new pad of paper that I have, which is 300 pounds. I love it. I love the fact that I don't need to tape it down because the watertight seal that's around the edges of it just keeps everything nice and tight until I'm finished painting my picture. And I'm going to start putting some water in the sky, we're gonna actually paint a lighthouse today. So we're gonna paint a little bit of sea and a little bit of uh, sky and a lighthouse. And I wanna talk about what it means to be a lighthouse in our community. You know, the lighthouse mission and the work that they do is really to shine God's light into people's lives. And you know, God says in the scripture in Proverbs 19, verse 17, if you help the poor, you're actually lending to the Lord and he will be the one to repay you. Now, that's a beautiful promise, but God's words aren't just promises, they're actually true. 
And so when we care about people that are less fortunate than us and we lend or we support organizations like Lighthouse and things like that, we are able to actually end up benefiting at times because God will never leave us short when we are looking after his business. God's heart are for those people. They're his children and he loves them so much. You know, we, we sometimes don't really in our busy lives think a lot about, you know, what does God want? What is God asking us to do? And, and not everybody's called to be what I would call an inner city missionary, because that's really what it is. It's evangelizing and being a bit of a missionary to those people, to, to teach them about the love of God. You know, when we become so wounded and so broken that we lose touch with our Creator completely, and all we see is the darkness in the world around us. And, and that can be a very painful place to be when everything feels so hopeless. I want to share a little bit about some of the people that my husband and, and his team have encountered as they go out onto the street and, and this winter taking people food and hot coffee. And, and at times we've even taken people firewood to be able to burn in an outside fire to stay warm. We had a cold spell where things were minus 40 out there and it was extremely cold. And you'd see people with black hands from the frostbite. And you know, God doesn't want us to be so wrapped up in ourselves that we don't see the needs of others. And I've seen over the course of the the time that my husband spent helping others that God has begun to repay my husband for his faithfulness. God is often talking to me about different things and you know I, I wore my special t-shirt today. This t-shirt says abide. I like to abide at the feet of Jesus and listen to what he has to say to me in each season of my life. I'm just making a little bit of darker cloud base in here, like there's a storm coming in, just like the people might feel out there that there's a storm in their life, that they don't, they don't have any light. Things feel very, very dark. And when we can give somebody a cup of coffee or a bottle of water, and really just to be kind to people. I think that's it's a true reflection of God's heart. Our Father in Heaven doesn't despise those people. And yet so often we will drive by and we will avoid making eye contact with them. We don't want to look at them. Because I think that convicts us in our heart. I think it speaks to us in ways that we don't always want to listen to. But you know, when we go out there and we begin to shine the light of God into those people's hearts, it's amazing what God starts to do in our own life. And I can honestly say that, you know, my husband who's 74, he's not a young man, and he's been quite content in his life to just get along and kind of live day to day in his life. Um, he's got Aboriginal background and certainly that has a bit of their makeup almost where they don't really um, well they're hunter-gatherers you know they would go out and they would hunt to feed their family and and then they'd come home from the hunt and um, life would just kind of settle into different rhythms and then they would have a need again and they'd go back out and hunt. And so I think some of those very, very deeply ingrained things 
are the, excuse me, they're in their nature. And so sometimes it takes time to, to shift some things that maybe we all have habits and behaviors that come from our family and from our culture. And so we need to, to learn God's way of doing things in our life and shift our perspectives at times to maybe a more godly view of, of things. So I'm just creating some rock face here underneath the base of the lighthouse. I'm just kind of putting a mix of color and then I'll let that dry while I go work elsewhere on the painting. I just kind of want to mix some texture in so that when it dries it it has bits of green and bits of brown and then I can put more detail into the rock face. get a little bit of point of land out there into the water. All right. So now, talking about my husband. You know, God really spoke to him about caring for the people on the streets. And so he spent a lot of time out there this winter looking after people and taking care of their most basic need for food and something to drink and so I've begun to see the repercussions of that in our life because when we show mercy God shows mercy to us and God began speaking so as I'm sitting at the feet of Jesus and hanging out with him he really began speaking about taking the business that my husband had to the next level he had this little business that he'd been doing for about four or five years, delivering packages for one particular customer, a couple of other customers, and some that have fallen off over the years, but really it was a little business that was designed simply to create a bit of income for him in his retirement. He likes to drive around, and so this way he was able to have his gas money to go out there and drive around in the city and just be out and about and be busy. And it's gotten busier. They've grown in the four or five years. They've grown and grown and grown to the point where it was pretty much a full-time business just looking after this one particular client. And so, being that my husband's 74, we started thinking more about him stepping back a little bit and bringing somebody else in to do more of the day-to-day -day stuff. And he'd been mentoring and training a guy to do that. And so those things were all in the works and then we were mentoring and training. And then in this January, February of this year, God said, expand. Expand and, and do more. So started pressing in and praying about what that actually looked like. What do we do? How do we do more? What, what, is, what are you wanting for us, Father? And as God began to, to show us, he said, well, you could have a bigger van, a bigger delivery van to go north and take packages up to some of the reserves because there's no longer a bus service in, in our country. And so lots of communities don't have a good system in place yet for for things so there's some opportunity there so as we began to work on it and talk about it some more and you know the ability to to take stuff or maybe do a day road trip out of town my husband really liked that idea <laughs> he likes to be out in the road and seeing the scenery and so we looked at getting a second commercial van and my idea was well let's not take on a lot of debt let's let's do this very economically we had some money we could pay cash for a vehicle and at least most of it and so 
were working on it and vehicles just kept selling out from underneath us. And so I just started to say, well, okay, what's your plan, Papa? What's your plan? What are you, what are you really wanting? And for my husband, my husband's the kind of person that really didn't want to express what he really wanted. He's, he's kind of reticent about declaring for something that's really important to his heart. I think it goes back to those wounds in our life. You know, when we experience things that happen and, you know, we no longer believe that we deserve it or, you know, well, it's never happened before, so why should it happen now? What's different about right now? And so he didn't really want to tell me what he really wanted, what was going on in his heart. And so it took a few times where this van didn't come through and we were looking and looking for him to say, well, this is actually what I really want. I really want a taller type of cube van where, you know, we could put taller freight in. And so that was a little more expensive and certainly not in the price range that I was shopping in. And yeah, that seemed to be the direction that we were supposed to go. One showed up in the market and that's the other thing there just there was such a lack right now of uh, cargo vans that it actually made it very very challenging and so we went and looked at this one and it seemed to be a really good fit and my husband was happy with it and so we said okay well if this is what you want God, you will work everything out. And the numbers that came back were so favorable, they even surprised the finance manager. The interest rate was lower than what he would have expected on a, on a used vehicle. Because once again, it wasn't brand new, still working on the used side of things. But favor, God was giving my husband favor. And as I just prayed into this, and, and God showed me that because my husband had mercy on the people that he was serving on the streets, God was showing him mercy. See, we often talk about favor in Christian circles. We want God's favor. So favor is often a good thing. But what about when we get something we don't even deserve? Something that surprises us completely. Something that's a heart wish, as I said. My husband had this heart wish that he didn't want to express. And God showed my husband mercy. Because he showed mercy. And that is what makes life completely amazing at times. When God shows up and he gives us the very things that we don't even want to wish for. We don't want to even express that longing. And I think that's the most amazing thing. But as I've studied this out and I've been studying a little bit more on God's mercy and God's plans for this season, God was actually giving me a prophetic word. And this prophetic word is for any of you that want to reach out and grab it right now in this season. You know, when we're in a shifting season again, when COVID first came down, for many people it felt like we were taken into a desert. And so, here we are, stuck in a desert, no place to go, it seemed like the whole world shut down, everybody had to stay home, and so I 
we just continued along, praying into what God's plans were, asking Him what His purpose was. And so, God was showing me that He was resetting things. He was resetting the church. He was resetting how we looked at church and how we did church in this season. God was changing things up. He was taking things to a whole new level. And that's kind of a... Um, there's always seasons. Everything in the kingdom of God is based around seasons. And so, as these seasons come along, it's up to us to press into God to see what season we're in. So here we're in this season of being in a desert. Now, even in the desert, God had provision for the Israelites. He had manna. He had the quail. He provided them with water. God never left them without anything in the desert. So we've had provision, and actually, if we've been watching what God's been doing, some of us have had amazing provision in this season. And I don't want to go down that road and talk about some of that stuff right now, because that's a word that has passed. But God is taking us into the next phase of that journey, and that phase is to arrive here at Jericho and crossing the Jordan River and stepping into a new land and a new day. Now, if you're a Joshua and you've been sitting at the feet of people that teach and give you instruction, and uh, you may be aware of this already, but if you're not aware of what's happening in the kingdom, and where God's moving things. There's a, there's a Joshua anointing that is rising up. And there's an opportunity to move into this new land and set up new tent pegs. So to enlarge our territory. But in that territory, there's gonna be a battle. This is not a territory that's just going to come by walking in and, okay, here I am in a new land. So like my husband, he's got a new business. He's got a whole new thing happening. We have to do some fighting for that. We have to fight some of the people, maybe it's competitors that are that are out there in the transportation courier business. Maybe it's um, challenging things with going to certain destinations. We went out to Barron's River, which is a really remote reserve with some freight. And you're on back roads that you don't know what you're going to encounter. And there's no cell phone reception. And so you're out there in the middle of this wilderness. And you're, you're alone except for people that might be on the road. And so, as we expand our tent pegs, we're moving into this new season. And we can look at it right now that everything is dark, everything is scary. We don't know what's happening right now. And be afraid of the changes that God's bringing about, or we can lean in. We can lean in and grab this word, and we can ask God for what he wants to change and expand in our life. What is God trying to do right now in your life that he wants to change? What new opportunity is in front of you that maybe you've been a little bit hesitant to grab a hold of? And it's like anything, anything new carries an element of fear. 
And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to have people and advisors around us that we trust, that we can get confirmation from, that we can experience um, feedback and find out exactly if this lines up in our lives for what God wants for us. We should never just start out and jump into things without having trusted advisors and people that speak into our lives. You know, Joshua would have spent 40 years in the wilderness with Moses, being discipled and trained and raised up as a leader to learn to understand the challenges of leading, to learn to work with people. So often we want to God speaks about something into our life and we just want to start and go <laughs> and we don't take the time to get that feedback or that advice maybe. We try to do it on our own. And sometimes by doing that we miss out on the blessings that God has for us. So, what 10 pegs is God trying to enlarge in your life right now? What is God trying to change for you in this season? Because I believe God's about to change many things in many people's lives. But we need to be aware and pressing in and sitting at His feet so that as we hear from Him, we begin to get a good sense of what it is that God wants from us in our life. And it's exciting when we're walking out our destiny hand in hand with God. That's not a scary place to be. That's actually a very, very exciting place to be in life. So where does God want to take you? Where does he want to walk with you today? What's stirring in your heart right now? What does God want to create for you? Just as I'm creating a picture of a lighthouse here. What is God creating? What is God doing in your life? Because God has got some new plans for people. He wants you to cross the Jordan River and go into Jericho in this season and plant your flag for the kingdom of God so that the kingdom of God can be expanded in this hour, so that the kingdom of God can be enlarged. We're reaching an age and a day when we need to know where we stand for the kingdom of God. We need to stand and battle for the things that God is calling us to do. Now, the battle might not look like a physical battle because when the walls of Jericho came down, all they did was march and sing. Maybe our battle is worship. Maybe we battle by worshiping God. Maybe we battle by painting like I do. There's many different ways to battle. Probably the most important is worship when we worship our Father, when we worship Jesus, and when we give testimony to the things that God is doing. Those can be the battles that enlarge our territory.
So now in this painting, because I have did a wet on wet process, I don't have a lot of detail in here yet. So sometimes when we're facing our Jordan River and our Jericho, we can lack confidence. We can be afraid. And especially in times like this when things seem to be a little bit fearful all around us. We, we feel the uncertainty of what's happening out there in, in our world. You know, we get confidence when we move and step. You know, when we, if we try to sit on the sidelines, it can actually hinder us and we never actually gain the confidence that we need to step into that new territory. If the Israelites had waited until they were ready to move, they probably would still be sitting on the other side of the Jordan River. But we have to have confidence, and it comes from taking action, taking a step, even if it's a small step. Maybe it doesn't have to be a big step into some unknown territory, but maybe that step is just talking to somebody about your dream, talking and sharing what's going on in your heart and what God's speaking to you that you might be afraid to pull out and examine. And when we start talking to other people, maybe we discover some of that courage that we actually need to take those steps. You know, we are meant to live in community for a reason. We are meant to live with our support systems around us. And too often in our society, some of those support systems have failed us. Um, like I said, people in societies develop habits and behaviors. And so, you know, we, we learn to just go along and do our job. We're trained to show up to school when we're really young and we're taught that as an employee, that's what we're all supposed to do, show up for work, do our job, and never question the status quo, never question what's going on in our lives. And just to exist in a sense to move the establishment along and so if we're not listening if we're not tapping into support and encouragement around us and if we are not listening to what Papa God is speaking to us we can miss out on so much just by going along and doing we can miss out on the passionate callings that God has put deep into our hearts from a very young age even sometimes. You know, God is always seeding ideas when we're very young. And then, you know, as life comes along and we are learning how to make a living and pay our rent and put food on the table, it's, it's a process sometimes to get back to those God-sized dreams, those things that God is speaking to us deep into the recesses of our heart. And I really want to see dreams get birthed and take root. God doesn't want us to sit in fear on the sidelines while other people around us share the victories of conquering new territories and experiencing new things. God wants you to be in the center of his purpose for you. He wants you to be able to walk and live out your dream, whatever that looks like. So for me, it was painting sitting here and painting and talking about dreams is a good chunk of 
things that I'm passionate about. And so I stepped in. I'm still learning, learning how to paint while I'm talking on the air. And it's the, got its challenges, it's got its learning curve. But the beautiful thing is that when we go with God and we let God, God's plans come to action in our hearts. Beautiful things get born. So what is God speaking to you today? Where does he want you to enlarge your ten pegs? What is he speaking over your life and your destiny? Do you feel like you're in the middle of a storm? Do you feel like you need a little bit of light? Let God be your light. Let God be that place of refuge. That peace that comes from being in the center of his will. There's actually a peace in the center of the storm. You know, in the eye of the hurricane, it's the most peaceful spot of all. So you might feel like you're in the middle of a hurricane. You might feel like you're in the middle of this gigantic storm right now. But when you can get to the center of that storm and you can get to the center of the peace that God has for you, that is the most peaceful, calm, amazing place to be and I call that sitting at his feet while the storm rages around me God storms the world storms life storms however we want to term it What is God trying to do in your life? What are the storms that he's asking you to navigate so that you can get to the center and be in the center of the storm with him? I just love that there's really no wrong way to do art. <laughs> it's a creative process that every time you put a brush to canvas, it looks different. It comes out different. It has this place of creating. God wants to create amazing things in your life, just like he has in my life, in my husband's life. If you lay hold of that word, that we're in this new season together, and we're walking out new destinies, new tent pegs, new realities. We will weather the storms together. And you might be thinking that that sky is awfully blue for such a stormy looking sea. I'm going to go in and make some dark clouds in there yet. I'm not finished with the sky. Just like God's not finished with you. There we go. 
So sometimes when you have to let things dry enough that you can not change the pigment color. That's underneath. I need a different brush. So I want to do a bit of a more of a dry on dry as opposed to wet on wet process to get some of these clouds in here. These stormy looking clouds <laughs> on our horizon. So God is calling each one of us because I believe his whole church right now is out in the wilderness walking into the next phase of where he's taking the body of believers right now. And that, for many people, is what is creating all the fear that's out there. And the world has so much fear with everything that's happening. But we can't walk in that fear. We're children of the King, we're royal sons and daughters, and He has a calling for your life. A destiny. A new color that He wants to sow into your life. in here on the rock face. Not that there's much for trees usually out on the tip where they have the lighthouse. It would be pretty barren. We'll put a little bit of some trees in there just so that it doesn't feel so lonely. So if you feel lonely, if you're feeling isolated in this season, reach out to somebody. Talk to them. Look for God's plans to show up there. God's got a plan. He's calling you and he's calling me to get ready for the battle. So there is a war coming. And it may not look exactly the way we think it's going to look. But we need to be ready for the season that he has. We need to be ready to know as children of the King that God does have a plan and his plans always prevail, as I said before. He loves each one of us, and he wants each one of us to know him in a way that is personal and So let's recap. So what have I been talking about today? As we've painted, I've talked about feeding the poor letting God show you mercy as you give mercy. We are the light for the kingdom of heaven in a dark world. Are you carrying his light? Are you walking as a child of the king? Are you stepping 
into the next phase of what he has for your life. The prophetic word that I talked about, about this being a season for Joshua's to rise up. Do you feel like there's something inside of you that God's speaking to, asking you to step up to new challenges? I challenge you to find that person in your circle to talk to you. Get mentored. Learn what you need to learn to be a good leader. God is calling each one of us to do our part. So this has been another episode of Painting the Scriptures with two True Word Television. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. the true word television spreading the true word of salvation
Watching the True Word Television, spreading the true word of salvation.